acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity around or near the Earth's surface is something like 9.8 meters per second squared. This changes a little bit depending on your location. The Earth is a little bit uh, wider in the, uh, near the equator and shorter near the poles, so that'll have an effect um, on, on the overall amount of gravity, but it's pretty close to 9.8. Objects will accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared, assuming down, assuming that gravity is the only force that's acting on them. If there are other forces, the main one that I think of here is wind resistance, or if you had something like a parachute, an airplane, or something like that, um, then the object obviously won't just accelerate due to gravity, it will accelerate due to all of the forces acting on it, and as a result, um, as a result, the acceleration won't be 9.8. So what are the things that would really stand in the way of this 9.8 meters per second squared being realized? Well, I sort of highlighted three things here. Large light objects. If you have an object whose surface area is relatively uh, large in comparison to its overall mass, then when it's sort of trying to fall through space, it's going to run into a lot of air, and that air will provide a wind resistance that will keep it from falling very quickly. So a large light object like a feather or something like that would not uh, be particularly close to that 9.8. Gravity not being constant, like I said, the Earth is sort of a little fatter than he is long, so the gravity up here in the North Pole is going to be a little bit larger than it is to somebody down here at the equator. So they're going to have a little less gravity down here. And the second thing is, even if you have a dense, small object, when it gets going fast enough, so here's your little object, and he's going really fast, then the wind that's standing in its face is uh, going to become more significant. If you have, uh, let's say, something falling off a very tall building or something, they're jumping out of an airplane or something, eventually they will be getting going so fast that uh, the wind resistance will build up and up and up over time and the force of gravity will keep pulling them down and eventually what will happen is they'll be going so fast um, that the force of gravity in the wind resistance will become equal and the object will stop accelerating altogether the acceleration will go to zero when this happens the special name for this is terminal velocity a good name because it's the highest velocity you're going to get up to so that's where your acceleration terminates but also if you've jumped out of an airplane or something the terminal or the termination is imminent anyway what we're going to do for this class is basically ignore all of these guys ignore wind resistance etc or any other forces that might be acting and we're going to treat acceleration due to gravity as 9.8 meters per second squared down all the time. With that in mind then we can sort of get a little bit more practice with our five equations of motion and do a bunch of problems where the first thing we're going to do is recognize that if the object is floating through the air it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared down and as a result we can we know one more thing and hopefully we can solve the problem so here's an idea let's say you're uh, at the top of some well and it's very deep here you are and you drop a pebble in and it goes all the way down to the bottom and then you hear it splash or something like that you hear it hit the bottom at a time of 2.4 seconds dropped tells us that you didn't throw it down, you didn't throw it up. So what we're going to assume here is that the initial velocity is zero. And again, it's falling into the well. We're assuming air resistance and all those kinds of things I was just talking about are ignorable. And that acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. How tall or how deep is the well? Well, really what we're asking is, what was the displacement of the stone as it fell into the well? So there we go, we have three, we can find the fourth. Displacement.
is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. And so that means zero. Nice when we have zero in a term because that means that whole term will go away. Plus one half negative 9.8. Uh, meters per second squared times the time of 2.4 seconds squared and let's just calculate our work here twenty eight point two meters negative The negative here refers to the fact that the object has been displaced down. We used up as our positive direction when we set this to negative. Um, so what this means then is that the well is 28.2 meters deep. And that makes sense because the rock is falling into the well. Okay, so here's our skydiver jumping out of an airplane. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to assume that they just jumped out and they basically have an initial velocity of zero. Again, um, as you go further and further away from the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity will decrease, but if you're at any sort of height that a skydiver would be at, then the acceleration is still going to be pretty close to 9.8 meters per second squared you really have to go into space to really get that sort of get sort of out of that um, situation and obviously a skydiver can't jump from space so uh, so we have V1, A and T and we're just missing it asks how fast will they be going so we're just missing the final velocity of the skydiver uh, the equation here is that A equals V2 minus V1 over t, negative 9.8 meters per second squared equals v2 minus 0 times 3 seconds multiply both sides by 3 seconds I have a V2 of 29.4 meters per second. Negative. Again, the negative here refers to the fact that the skydiver is going in the down direction. A baseball is thrown straight up into the air with a maximum speed of 5.4 meters per second. What is the maximum height of the ball and the impact velocity in the time of flight? Okay. So, here's our baseball player. It says to ignore the height of the person throwing the ball, so we're going to assume he throws the ball almost exactly from the ground. He's going to throw it up. It's going to come back down and hit the ground. Um, in order for the baseball to change directions, and you can throw a ball into the air and check this one out yourself, but in order for the ball to change directions at the top of the flight, it almost has to stop for an instant when it's up there. Now that stop is instantaneous. It's not going to sit up there for any period of time. But as it's going up, it's slowing down because it's going in one direction and the acceleration is going in the other. And when it reaches the top, that's the point at which it actually will stop for an instant and come, in, come back down. Uh, what that means then is that at the maximum height, the velocity object, where when it's actually reached it at the top of the motion, is zero. Okay, this is something that isn't written anywhere in here in the question. Otherwise, other than it says it's the maximum height of the ball, so it's something you need to be aware of. The acceleration due to gravity is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the initial velocity is 5.4 meters per second. So for the max height, we're asked for delta d. And the equation here is that 2a delta d equals v2 squared 
minus v1 squared. 2 times negative 9.8 And again, a reminder, I mentioned this uh, a few slides back, but this negative here is outside of those brackets. So remember, when it gets squared, that negative doesn't go away. So 29.16 divided by 19.6, it's going to go to a height of 1.5 meters. Okay. And here we do have a positive, and that makes sense because we're talking about this displacement right here where the ball has gone up. So it's gone up 1.5 meters. Uh, okay, impact velocity and time of flight. We have a slightly different trick for those two situations. I'm going to go this way. For impact velocity, or time of flight, I'm just going to translate the information that still holds. My acceleration, this object is floating through space, so it's 9.8 meters per second squared. It's falling and it has an initial velocity of 5.4 meters per second but I can't use this this V2 occurred because it was at the maximum height that's when it went up and it was stopped and it was coming back around for the impact velocity or the time of flight I want to go all the way to this point in motion which is when it hits the ground again that's totally different from when it's at its maximum height I can't use V2 equals zero what I can recognize is if it goes all the way up and comes back down, like that runner on the check from, I don't know how many slides ago, the displacement is zero. Its change in position once it gets back down to here is zero. It's gone up and it's come back down, so there's no change in position. Um, so I can find impact velocity, and I can find time of flight. The equation for impact velocity would be 2a delta d equals v2 squared minus v1 squared. So I got 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is all a little bit of a waste because I know that displacement is 0. So once I get that 0, that whole term is going to go to 0. And v2 squared minus v1 squared. So if I move my v1 over to the other side of the equation, I can see that v1 squared equals v2 squared. Now, this is interesting. All, I've re all that really matters here is that I've put my displacement into zero, as zero. So what I'm saying here is that if my object returns to the same height then my initial velocity and my final velocity are the same well that's not quite true it's close the magnitude of them is the same v1 magnitude is going to be equal to v2 but we have to remember here that when we square root, sometimes we can introduce uh, we can introduce a little bit of a problem. So to finish solving this equation, I need to square root both sides. So I'm going to get v1 equals v2. But be careful when I square root, I create uh, I create two possible roots. I create two possible solutions, plus or minus. That happens because negative five 
squared is equal to 5 squared. They're both equal to 25. So we've got to be careful, right? When we square root, we have to recognize that it could have been 2 or it could have been minus 2. In this case, the V1 is 5.4 meters per second. And so I know my V2 is either 5.4 meters per second plus or 5.4 meters per second minus. If I remember my motion, the object went up and it came back down, so my V2 is when it's going down, which means I need the negative root. V2 is equal to negative 5.4 meters per second. So because the displacement was zero, it returned to the same height, that meant that V2 and V1 were very similar. They're almost the same. They have the same size, but the direction has changed. We get the directional change because we square root, and it could have been the plus or the minus. In this particular situation, we want the minus because it's going down. Um, but what's interesting here is the magnitude of the velocities is the same, just not their direction. Time of flight's a little simpler. Uh, delta D equals V1T plus one-half AT squared. Zero equals 5.4 meters per second. T minus one-half 9.8 meters per second squared T squared. 0 equals 5.4 meters okay a little technical difficulty there but let's not lose track of what we're doing here 5.4 meters per second we're just solving this equation minus 4.9 meters per second squared t squared um, not totally trivial I have to if I really want to do this mathematically correctly I should factor a t out at this point And then I can recognize that solutions are t equals 0 and 5.4 meters per second minus 4.9 squared there meters per second squared t equals 0. Uh, I'm being really formal here uh, just to be really correct. We're not interested in this as a solution. So you might have back here just thought um, I can say t does not equal 0 and then divide by t. Either way, it's fine whether you do it here or there. It doesn't make any difference. But this is just a little more formally correct. Bring my t to the other side, and then divide it both sides by 4.9. And I'll get a t of... 1.1 seconds. So there we are. There's your time of flight. There's your final velocity. And your maximum height.